Hi everybody and welcome. I'm going to try this video again for like the fifth time. For some reason my SD card's not working. I got another one. I reformatted it. So we'll see. These are called T Pocket Wallets. And I wanted to show you how I made these. They're really nice. They're nice gifts for your friends or when you're going somewhere and you don't they don't drink tea. You could even put the tea bag coffee, uh, the coffee tea bags in here for yourself as a travel thing, a gift for a friend. Put yourself a little bit of honey or a little packet of sugar, a little spoon, and you're all set to go. And they have a nice clip on them. They're very fast, easy, fun to make. This was another one that I made. I'm going to put these in my craft fair. So I have a few, and I've already given away a few, and I made a bunch last year and give them away. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make these. And what you're going to need is you're going to need two pieces, seven and a half by seven and a half. One is going to be your cover, and one is going to be your inside pocket. Then you're going to need four uh, you're going to need four or I'm sorry three four by seven and a half and that's going to be this it's four inches wide by seven and a half you're going to need three of these you're going to need one piece folded because you want it doubled it's going to be two by three and if you want the whole length it will be six by two and then you fold it in half to get your three inches then you are going to need one piece of interfacing that is seven and a half by seven and a half and you're going to need three more pieces of interfacing that's two inches by one and seven eighths and you can buy the interfacing uh, by the roll. I got mine at Walmart. Uh, that's about the cheapest I found. They have different weights. One side is gluey and sticks, and the other side doesn't. You can buy it with both sides, but you only need one side that has the glue on it. You're going to need one of these um, snap kits unless you're going to put ribbon on it. And this whole kit was $20.00. Um, on Amazon which I don't know why I just did with a pokey too and I'm gonna need that so wherever it is let me look real quick who knows what I did with it I might be able to use something else but anyways for now I got pens everywhere for now that's what we're gonna need so we're going to take, to start with, our front cover of our wallet, and we're going to go and iron the fusible web to the back on that piece, which I already did to save time. Then you want to go over to the iron, and your pieces that are 4 by 7.5, you're going to fold those in half like this and press them. You'll take your fusible web and put this inside and press it. And if you have a little bit bigger, just don't touch that with your iron and cut that off. This one's a little big because it's an extra piece. I already did the three pieces that we're going to need to save time. I have my fusible web in there. And as you can see, it glues to one side and not the other. This one, I guess I didn't iron, so I will iron that one. And let me do that real quick over here so that they're all ironed. I must have missed this one. Only takes a second for it to set up. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever's going to be your inside material which I picked this one and you're going to put I put a tea bag in here and I make sure that it's down 
Um, let me see if I can move this a little bit better so you can see. I make sure that it's down from the top about a good inch and a half or something like that because when we sew this, we don't want it to be up here and then our tea bag will end up sticking out. We want to be able to have it inside. So the first one I'm going to use is going to be this color. You can use all the same. You can coordinate different colors if you want. And I slide my tea bag in there like that. That's how I figure it out. And then I know that I have room to sew and room that it's not going to come out. So then what I do is I pin it. This one's a little long, but I can cut it off. And we're going to sew along the bottom here, right along this part there. So I will put this on there. I like to sew on the right side of it. And remember to back stitch so your stitches don't come out. Then we will take that off. This has extra hangovers, so all I'll do is trim it off. And the good way is, uh, if you measure them right, I just used some scraps that I had. They won't hang over. They'll be exactly the thing. But feel free to use up any scrap and just trim off the excess. Now the next one that we're going to use is going to be the butterfly. And I'll put this tea bag in here and I'll lay my butterfly here one. And I got enough room to sew it, enough room for there, and enough room in here. And I just use my tea bags for the measuring part of it. That way I know it's right. I know the tea bag's got a nice deep pocket. Pin it again. These are pretty quick. I haven't timed myself on how long it takes, but it doesn't take that long. A beginner can do it. Now we'll sew this one. And remember to back stitch. I do about a a quarter of an inch seam on it. Into a quarter of an inch, a half inch, whatever you like. So now we have two pockets on there, and we'll go. Our third one is going to go on the very bottom. There's no need for measuring on that. We will pin that on there and sew this one. It's how quick these pockets go together. Okay, so now we got all of our pockets on. And as you can see, let me get some tea, I'll show you that they'll all fit. We have one pocket, this will be two pockets, three pockets, and then later on we'll be sewing a seam and then we'll have three more. But they fit nice, they got plenty of room to hold them in place. Then we're going to take our little uh, two inch by one and seven eighths and we're going to fold that together, wrong sides together, and we're going to sew each side. Don't sew the bottom close because we'll need that to turn it. Remember to back stitch. And then repeat it again on the other side. And I have a dowel rod that I like to use. A lot of people's, I've seen other videos where people have done stuff similar to this. They'll say they use scissors, pliers, 
um, all different kinds of stuff. You want to be really careful because this fabric will rip. I use dowel rods. I turn it just enough to flip it over like that. I take my dowel rod, I put it inside, and then I just hold it up and I slowly work it and look at how easy it is to turn this little piece here. And then you can press this either by your fingers or with a presser. We're going to put this, which is going to come like if you were to fold this up and pinch it. The middle of this is usually always at the top of the second pocket. So I'm just going to put that right in the middle of the second pocket and the first pocket like that. And then this one needs to be trimmed off first. So some of my blue were a little bit longer. They were scraps I had from something else and I just grabbed them. Figure, cut them later. Um, so we'll put that on there. Then we're going to take our top piece that has um, the fusible web on it and we're going to put that on the top of this and make a sandwich. I'll we'll make sure we're together and then we're going to pin this. I'm just going to put a couple pins in. You can pin each corner if you feel better about it. I'm going to put a, just a couple in and we're going to sew down this side, the bottom, and up this side. We're going to leave the top unsewn, which the top is where there's no pockets so that we are going to be able to turn it and put our snaps on and I just pulled that out so let me put that back in there we're going to do a, a quarter inch or half inch seam allowance and you can use your foot out of here on the, as a guide too so you can keep the seam the same and you don't have to measure it and I'm just picking up my foot pivoting it and turning it so we got all of our pieces together and I'm using my foot as a guide the inside of the foot and that way my seam is the same all the way around So now we're going to take our pens out. This is almost done. It's It goes pretty quick. I'm just going to trim off any bulk. And right now I'm going to cut these two corners off. I'll cut the upper corners later. That just reduces some of the bulk when we get ready to sew. If you have a lot hanging over, just trim it up a little bit. It, just don't go into your um, seam. So now what we're going to do, because this is pretty heavy, so it makes it kind of bulky. We're going to turn this right side out. And I wish I knew what I did with my little poker. But I got another one. Let me go get it real quick. I must have dropped it. But it came with a pokey tool. Who knows what I did with it. I've been moving everything around up here. Like I said, I've made quite a few videos. Oh, here it is. It was inside the box. It came with a pokey. It's a piercing tool. I call it a pokey tool. I'm just going to turn this um, right side out right now. And this is this pocket that's why it looks funny I think and what do I got going on here this pocket that pocket it's like where am I missing a pocket there it is Sometimes it gets flipped in the, the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to flatten this. And we're going to put a snap on here. So I will take this. Let's see. We have all different colors we can use um, for snaps. Let's put a... Uh, 
We'll put these like reddish color ones. They're not really red, but that's their idea of red. Like I said, I got this on Amazon. I've been pretty happy with it. Um, you need a male and a female. And I don't know if you can see the difference. One's in a big circle and the other one has like a little Audi. And then these ones look like thumbtacks. So we need two of those and a, uh, a female and a male as they call them. So we're going to put a hole in here. And I'm not putting it too close. It's about an inch. Uh, about, let's see. About a half an inch away from the end. And we want the one with a, uh, looks like a thumbtack on top of this one. And then we want either the male or the female on the other one. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you got one. The top part that looks like a thumbtack goes in this bottom metal piece. So we set that down in that little bowl and we just push down on here and it's all good. Then we're going to take this and we're going to fold this in half like this so that we know where we want our other snap. And I'll lift this up and I'll go right about here so I know that the snap will fit on there. And I'm just going to hold that. I don't want to poke that all the way through. I'll put my hands in here and then I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to turn it. And I just stabbed myself because be careful. Then I'm going to take the part that looks like a thumb tap and I'm going to put that one on the inside and then that way I'm making sure I'm not bleeding and getting it all over. Um, that way we can hide that. And then we'll put the other part on there and we're going to slide our tool inside here and put that little thing uh, cap like, whoops, oh I lost my little piece, my little cap. We're going to put that cap inside of this little metal dish. And it's kind of stiff to work with because of the um, webbing. I'm going to slide that on there, get that down in there, and then once it gets in there it slides. And then you just push it down. And then that is that part. So now we're going to turn it back to the wrong side because we got to finish sewing it up. And I just make up a bunch of these and then go down the line. But I'm running out of some solid colors, so I need I got plenty of fabric with different um, patterns, but I need some solids to go with it. Or that way it's not all the same color. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew about two inches on this side and two inches on this side and we're going to leave the middle open because we have to return it again. So let's get that out, down out of the way. Remember to back stitch. Always remember to back stitch at your end and your beginning. And leave yourself a good enough gap that you're not going to rip your fabric taking it apart. So now we'll clip these corners like we did the other one just to reduce that uh, balk. And then we're going to turn it back and side out for the last time. This time it'll be a little more harder because of, uh, you know, you just got a little hole to work with. And you don't want to force it too much that you'll rip your fabric because believe me I've done it numerous times and get so mad at myself for trying to rush and then once you rip it it's no good you might as well just throw it away because you can't repair it and I just work a little bit at a time and push it around and pull it a little bit I don't pull too hard because I don't want it to rip And it's, like I said, it's a little stiff because of the uh, fusible web in here. 
And the cheapest place I've found it is Walmart. It's probably unless you got a, a Joann's and you got a half off coupon or something, then it would be cheap that way. It used to be super cheap. You used to be able to buy it, but everything's expensive now. So now we're going to go through and we're going to push all of our corners out. And we're just about done, people. Believe it or not, we want to make sure our pockets are all on the right side. Okay, so now we'll stick our dowel rod in there. I wouldn't stick scissors and stuff. I hear a lot of people do it. <clears throat> Why ruin expensive fabric? It's not worth it. Why ruin your hard work? Because it will poke hole in it. Okay, so now we have this is like this. We need to go over to the ironing board and press this down so that we have a nice seam that'll be like that and then we're gonna top stitch it and we'll be done so let me press this down real quick and when you're ironing uh, make sure you don't iron your snaps because they will melt okay so got a little string I'm trying to hurry I don't want to keep you guys all day so now we're going to stitch all the way around to secure everything. I'm going to back stitch again. Like I said, at every beginning and every end, I always back stitch. And I hope this video works because this is like the fourth time today that I've made this video. It's something with the SD card. It's not formatting right. I don't know why, because it does all my wishing videos really good. I think it's time for a new one. And it's a little bit thicker to go through, so just take your time because you you're going through a lot of material. Pockets and everything. is done. We just got to trim our strings up. One last step and we're all done. So now <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to fold this in half like this. You can either iron it again or press it really good with your hand because you want to be able to see the seam go down here because that's where um, we're going to sew. So I'm going to make sure that I got a really nice straight seam. It lines up good. And I'm just going to sew down the middle. When I made these before, I put strap um, lace on them. And I uh, decided I wanted to go with the snaps when I found the snap kit. If you were going to do lace, how you put this in here you would just put a piece of lace on each side and put it in the inside and then it would come out when you did it. So now we have this done. I'll show you how it looks. All of our pockets, our T. It fits six bags of T's. A lot of these I've seen only do four. I've always done six. I like to give a variety. I charge um, six bucks a piece for these. You can charge more if you can get more. I don't have much into it, scrap fabric and stuff that I have. So you get my snap to snap. I think my little thing bent on there. So now we have our tea pocket. You undo it, and there you go. So thank you for watching. <coughs> I hope you try this and have a blessed day. Bye bye.